Uh, how is it that, that the American Negro, who for so long has been a second-class citizen in yeah. the United Still States... Still is, I'm sorry. Uh, well, how, long, how is it that he's contributed so much to American <coughs> culture? Well... It's music, dance, you know, everything you can think well, of. Well, I have to be very modest about that. I would say certainly <laughs> as we look at the African peoples in Nigeria, for example, I just got a wonderful invitation to go to Nigeria to be present at the installation at the uh, at the uh, Governor General Azikwe, an old friend, mm -hmm. who will now and I uh, and I had to cable him. I'm in Australia. I certainly would like to be with you, uh, but I'm out here with some good folks. But I'll get to Nigeria later. Mr. Rapson, so, do you feel yeah. that Africa is to some extent an affinity for it, a home, or do you still feel America is essentially your home? How do you feel? In, with well, let me come. Yeah, I'll come to that in just a second. But to come back to it, so I would say the Africans and the American Negroes have turned out to be an extraordinarily gifted people. The great tragedy is that by not making us full-class citizens as yet in America, they may be losing I don't know how much yet. It's, and to come back, I would say that unquestionably, I am an American, born there, uh, my father slave there. Upon the backs of my people was developed the primary wealth of America, mm. the primary wealth. You have to have accumulated wealth to start, you know, to build. Mm. You did it another way here in Australia. You, you know, you had to build your accumulated wealth too. Mm. You just came and took it, you know what I mean? And that's what they did in most of the countries. It's what you West, that's what you Europeans did. You just took it. We got to catch up with you a little bit. <laughs> and so in America. So there's a lot of America that belongs to me yet, you understand? Mm. But just like a Scottish American is proud of being from Scotland, mm. I'm proud for being African. Now in our school books, they tried to tell me that all Africans were savages till I got to London and found most of the Africans I knew in, were going to Oxford and Cambridge <laughs> and doing very well and, uh, and learned their culture. Yeah. Uh, and even once had, well, somebody had the temerity after one had, had t conquered the Chinese people and imposed upon them the opium trade and everything else to suggest that they were a backward people, just the people who had been civilized so long over the rest of you folks didn't make any sense at all. So somewhere uh, it was wonderful to find about the colored peoples of the world that they were very advanced. So I would say today that I'm an American who is infinitely prouder to be of African descent, no question about it, no question about it. I'm an Afro-American, and I don't use the word American ever loosely again. Now this was, the feeling, right. this was the feeling uh, That's right. that, that when you, you're in London about 1937, 38, you really had the world at your feet then. I mean, you, you're a tremendous success, you were recognized over the world, and yet you went back to America. Was this, right. this was the feeling that took you back. I it? felt I had to go back to my people. That's right. The, go, the going was tough. Mm -hmm. And uh, today I can go back. I just had my passport renewed. I could go back to pretty tough times now. Mm -hmm. But any time I could get a telegram next week that the Negro people had gathered somewhere in one of their conferences as they could mm -hmm. and say, Paul, in the, dif in the difficulties that are going on in America, would you come back and help us? I would take the plane as soon as I finished my engagements.